Welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone that's subscribed already because I've got 50 subscribers, which um, to me is amazing. That's quite a lot of people in my eyes. Um, it's a small number, 50, but if you think about 50 people standing outside the front of your van, all taking a keen interest at once, that's a hell of a lot of people. <laughs> anyway, that's my way of looking at it. Um, today's video is going to be me giving the Dometic Waco CD30 draw fridge a review so yeah I'm gonna get on with it in the back of the van and show you exactly my setup and how it works okay so um, my fridge is underneath my rock and roll bed um, I didn't have the space to put it anywhere else and that is where I wanted it I wanted it out of the way um, not in plain sight to the naked eye I just wanted it out of the way and hidden so it's underneath here and I'm just going to put the seat back for a sec, bear with me. Right, so here she is. Um, yeah, it's a lovely fridge. You can see it's pretty big. I mean, the size of the, sp the space I've got underneath the bed, um, it's pretty much taken up half. And it is a big unit. They do do a CD uh, CD20. That's the 20 litre one, which is a lot smaller. But I went for the CD30 because... You know, the amount of money you're spending, you really want to have as much space as you can inside a fridge. And that's my opinion anyway. But, uh, yeah, you can see it's good quality. You've got a nice, like, plastic front on it. Um, like, black sparkling plastic. And then on the side, it's, like, like a solid metal. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of, but it, it feels really good. I think the fridge weighs about 18 kg. Um, it was quite a job to actually fit it in underneath. I uh, did it all single-handedly. But I managed to do it. As you can see here, I've got these big L brackets. Um, these are like uh, heavy duty building L brackets for like, you know, I don't know, builders use them for whatever. But yeah, I had to put these on and like, basically you've got, you've got like the bolts that come with the, the fridge itself. Um, I just used these, the, the existing bolts, bolted it into there and then screwed it onto my floor. Now the reason why I had to put these big L brackets in is because you can see my frame is... Um, it's quite big so on the rock and roll bed so the fridge wouldn't actually get uh, over that um, unless I put them on yeah the fridge did come with four L brackets um, I think if you've got like a, a flat floor with nothing in front of it then they'll be fine but yeah like I said I didn't use them I couldn't use them too small so yeah so getting into it the fridge gonna open it up got a nice little good quality sort of lip there sort of the handles lovely on that that, that, that retracts and comes out nicely the fridge is on some runners. Um, they don't seem to lock in as such, but I don't see why they would need to. It sort of will just, just stay there like that. And yeah, you can see inside you've got a, um, you've basically got the, the minimum and the maximum setting on it. At the minute it's on zero. Zero means the fridge is off, so it's not actually on. So if I turn that, the fridge is now gonna come on. All the way, she's on maximum, it'll probably take her a little while to get up to, to temp but when it's up to temperature um, it does get nice and cold now inside it's like a plastic ceramic finish um, that's pretty much the same as what you you have in most fridges I think and yeah you can see like there's still a, a nice bit of height above the, the, the drawer itself so you can stack things up a bit in there if you need to um, I'm going to show you what I can get in there so at the minute I've got a, uh, this ain't an advert for co-op, but I've got a co-op shooting star cake um, with one slice taken out of it. Uh, yeah, it was my birthday the other day, so my mum got me that, and yeah, I've had one slice, and that's it really for the minute. <laughs> but yeah, look, I'll show you, that will fit in there like so, nice and easily. So everyone knows the size of a birthday cake, and if you can get that in there, um, you can get most things in there. So I've got a bottle of Highland Spring as well. That will go in there, no problem at all. And also just uh, a small pint of milk, which is actually half a pint of milk, so I've drunk most of that. Let me shut that up. Perfect. And yeah, that's it. So the fridge now will get up to temperature. Um, on the maximum setting, it is very cold. I used it on the uh, maximum temperature setting, which is obviously the coldest. I used that the other night and I was in the van. I think the fridge was on without any, I didn't have any hookup. It was just on my leisure battery. I was just wild camping. I had it on the on, on for about, I think eight or nine hours. Um, coldest setting, my vehicle leisure battery went from 12.7 down to 12.6 volts, which is hardly anything. 
the food that I had in there was absolutely freezing. I had some like garlic pickle in a jar. I had um, a bottle of orange juice and literally it just it come out, it was like colder than what I've got at home, like the fridge at home. So yeah, I was really impressed with that. And the fact that it hardly used any power as well was also a bonus. Um, it does say in the manual, it uses uh, three amps, that's the current rating, but I believe once it gets up to power, uh, up to temperature, sorry, it should only use about 1.5 amps. So yeah, if, if you've got a 100 amp battery, I mean, do the maths on that, you could probably run it just on its own with a leisure battery. If you had a 100 amp leisure battery, that would give you what, is it 60, we get about 60 hours out of it? If, if you ask, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, about 60 odd hours. But that would be providing you, you didn't have any hookup and also um, nothing else was connected to your leisure battery. So I reckon you'd get one or two nights, you'd get two nights wild camping, I reckon. Um, so yeah, and it also has, it's got like an intelligent uh, voltage sensor built into it, which basically to protect your battery, once your battery gets to a certain voltage, it will cut out. Um, so that's good to bear in mind. Yeah, it is a big fridge, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you um, what it's like from the back of my rock and roll bed, because it's actually got like the compressor on it, and you'll see how much space that takes up as well. So you can see that's the compressor. Um, you can see my L brackets as well, both sides. Um, yeah, that's the back of the van. So it, does, it is quite long. And at the minute, I mean, it comes obviously the cables. I've just got it on a temporary connection down here. So it's just a 12 volt, 12 volt connection, but you can run it on 24 volt as well. So now the fridge is on, it's on maximum. You can hear it hum a tiny bit when you're close to it. Obviously, being right underneath my bed, um, if I turn it on just before I go to bed, I'm going to hear it for a little bit. So once it's up to temperature, you don't actually hear uh, any noise coming from it. It's very quiet. Um, so, yeah, if you're thinking about buying one, um, yeah, I mean, why not? If you if you haven't got the space for a normal fridge, I would have put a, I think it's called the CR50, which is like the 50 litre like normal stand-up fridge. I would have put that in, but I don't have enough room for it with my full width rock and roll bed. But yeah, highly recommend it. It's good quality. It is a bit expensive, but as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. And if you want cold beers in the summer, then, you know, go for it. Give it a go. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> um, and also, if you're new to my channel, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Um, give me a like. Uh, give me a comment. If you've got any questions, I'll get back to you. All right. Cheers.